Hello, hello everybody, Renzo here. Welcome to my channel. Okay, let's paint. I'm gonna paint a new portrait. Uh, uh, this is gonna be another anatomy study. That means first I'm gonna paint the skull, and then I'm gonna paint on top of the skull the face. You find the link to the photograph on the description box. I don't have a link to the skull image, but you can find you know that on Google. Just Google for any scar image. Okay. Uh, hello, Alex Brown. Thank you. Hello, Michael. Okay. Let's see. Just one second. Just moving things here a little bit on my screen. Okay. I'm going to start just with uh, sketching the scar. I just uh, basically I use just uh, synthetic brushes. Okay, let's see. I pick up a little bit of linseed oil, and I have here raw uh, raw umber. Okay, let's, let's see. My I'm gonna place the whole head here. It's gonna be the top. The bottom. Let's see. Yeah, here I got this. I got this space for mixing my colors. Okay. Now let's see first. Uh, uh, first, I'm going to draw just uh, some. Just you know, lay down some few marks. Just watching on the photograph. Okay, for to place the eyebrows to place the bottom of the nose bottom of the chin okay just proportions regular proportions now i place the eyes usually uh, i split this in three and i sit the eyes on top of this line then the mouth i place the mouth uh, halfway from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin the, the mouth here okay and i have an idea there Okay, now I'm going to draw the eye sockets. As you can see here on this area, if you see the skull, we see a little bone. This is called the vomer. Okay, now here we see the nasal bone. That is this. Okay. nasal bone and here we see an eye socket now the other eye socket okay, I'm gonna make this a little bit darker oh I didn't notice if my audio is okay can you hear me okay can you hear me okay Oh, hello, Buck, Bob, drink water. Hello, James. Oh, hello, Jared Pearson. I found your YouTube channel recently. Okay. Okay, thank you, Jared. It's, I still struggle with color matching, but you gave me the courage to try. Yep, <laughs> that's good. Hello, Marius. Okay, I got one eye socket here and the other eye socket. Okay, here I can see the cheekbone. And here I can see the cheekbone. Okay, what uh, is called the zygomatic bone. Okay. I promise I'm gonna practice more about the names of the bonds because uh, it's kind of difficult to remember the names, and I don't even know my the name is in in my language in my native language. It's gonna be difficult to 
to remember thing in English. Okay, I got the cheekbone here. No, the teeth, they go here. Now, the skull on the photograph here on my, my screen is not a perfect, a perfect match. Okay, it's not in the perfect position like the photograph. And adapting the position to the photograph. Okay, look at this area here. We can see that we have a lot of muscles in this area. The same here. If we press our face at this point below the cheekbone, we can touch our last tooth, or last, you know, in this area, and we can feel, you know, that the bone beneath, the, the, in this area here. Okay. One thing to notice: the bone, the bone of the bone here, the, the zygomatic bone, is aligned with the bottom of the nose, with the vom vomer bone here. I'm gonna do something like this just for the the teeth. Somebody has tried uh, painting like like this before. Let me know because I think it's a pretty good exercise. One thing that I used to practice as a student, it was drawing the bones, the skull and all the bones on top of magazines. I just look for magazines and I draw on top of the photograph, the bone structure. It was, it was a, pretty, a pretty good exercise. Hello Exploring History, hello Dora, hello Guy Studios, hello Her, Her Himamalini, sorry if I mispronouncing your name. The cheekbone goes all the way to the ear canal here, around here. We place the ear here. Okay. In this area, we can see just uh, the column. The spine, okay, on the bones here. Okay. The eyebrows goes on top of this. Okay, here on the edge of the bone. I think I'm gonna move this a little bit up. When we chew, when we eat, if we touch this area or or face, we can feel the muscle moving here. There's a muscle that goes from here and attaches to the mandible. Okay, to move the mouth, to eat. And a lot of muscles obviously coming from from the cheekbone. And they go to the corner of the mouth to move the mouth. Got enough there. Okay, I'm checking. Yeah, I think that's okay. Uh, I made a mistake here on the on the eye socket. I drew this too big, but that's okay. Okay, now I'm going to paint half of the face first and then the other half. I was thinking maybe it could be, uh, or it could be like this. I paint first this half and then this half. 
or maybe just the left and the right. What do you think? Obviously, there are more, more work on the eyes. Yeah, I think I'm gonna start working the upper portion of the face, and then the lower portion of the face. Uh, that's gonna be a little bit difficult, but you know, uh, I need to push myself to practice. And I think that's gonna be a nice, always a nice challenge. To try new things. Let's see. I'm gonna read some comments. Ernest Stevenson. Hello, Christine. I say in every lesson is gold. At 85 years, to, uh, and for examples, but few, but I'm <coughs> thankful for your generous teaching. Okay, welcome. Hello, Mohammed. Thank you. Hello, Dejan. Dejan is saying about some canvas board to practice the skeleton. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, I'm going to start mixing the colors. I, I, I just need to use, uh, you know, like five to ten brushes. It depends. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and. In this case, uh, basically, we can see clearly, you know, light and shadows. Eh? So clear. Okay, I'm going to draw something first. I have this brush. Okay, here I see shadow in this area. Here I see shadow. Okay, this side. Okay. Here, here, and here. All this is shadow, shadow here. Okay. The hair goes on top of this. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna start painting the upper portion of the face. What do you think? Or maybe just the mouth, the lower portion of the face. I don't know. Or maybe just like this. Paint the upper portion of the face. Okay, I'm gonna start mixing just something pretty simple. I just pick up orange. Oh, I'm gonna mention my colors. I have titanium white, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, cadmium red, a glycerin crimson, cobalt blue, raw umber, and ivory black. Just pick up orange and white. Okay, you can choose to knock down this color with blue, raw umber, or black. If you're experienced, you're not gonna you're gonna be okay using black. If you're a beginner, I would suggest raw amber or blue. Okay. Okay. I'll knock down this with raw amber. Raw amber, orange and white. Now, look at the skin that you're trying to represent. You need, like, it's the light, you know, it's warm, it's cool. You think this color is too orangey, you need to knock it down, grade down the color, make it cooler. The skin is pinky. I don't know. I mean, I see the skin here, and it looks like it has a lot of white. I know, I, can, I cannot tell that the light is, is warm, like at the sunlight, you know. Maybe it's a light coming through a window. That means that we have a combination, you know, mostly the skylight and sunlight. It's mostly the skylight. The skylight is a light blue. Okay. I'm going to knock down, light up this color a little bit more. I'm gonna add a touch of cadmium red. 
Okay. Let's see, I got this color for the light. I know that on off, okay? I'm not trying to copy exactly the color that I see right now. That's my first layer. A face, a portrait, a anything. It has like, you know, a hundred, a two hundred, a thousand values. And it's trying to simplify this to two values. That's a lot of simplification. Yeah? Okay, first, let's see the likes. Okay, you know, if you like what you see, press the like button. That's all I ask. I can ask for more things, but that's just what, what I'm asking now. The forehead. I'm squinting down my eyes, you know, and trying to, for example, when I paint this, I'm thinking always about one simple flat shape. What I see is this. Okay, look at that. that in that way, it's easy to copy. If I start thinking right now that the forehead is kind of flat, it's kind of, you know, it has a bump here. A bump here you can see that on the you know on, on the skull a bump a bump that's gonna be too many details okay. I think I'm gonna paint first to you know like this half here. Okay. Top, uh, hello, Michael. So how much of an expert of an army one has to be? painting an object uh, not not that much okay it's uh, it's more about observation I would suggest just buy a, a skull you know I think in any art art store you can find a skull uh, and touch it you know it's pretty nice to feel the ups and downs on the skull as an art student you know I, I have touched real skulls which can be kind of creepy for so many people, but you know, I mean, it's very just to buy one on, on the store. You do, those are just you no know, plastics skulls, and they are pretty accurate. It's about just getting information, uh, a draw, a lot of, you know, about learning names, uh, bombs, names, uh, try, but uh, it's, it's kind of, you know, I, I have tried too many times trying to learn all the names, but, you know, they just keep forgetting, I keep forgetting the names, but for sure I can draw a skull by memory, and that's for sure. I have tried that so many times in different positions. That's an exercise, that's a common exercise. Draw a skull by memory from any different angle, okay? That's something that we gotta try to do. I have done so many drawing drawings by memory and I'm you know, 100% positive about doing that again and again. That's pretty good. No, with a lot of details, of course, because I'm not gonna remember by memory all of ups and downs. But basically, just the position of the ch the, the cheekbone, the eye socket, nasal bone. Okay. Okay, let's 
see, I got here. face. Now I'm going to pick up a different brush and I'm going to mix the color for the shadow. Just, just two values first, okay? Low Nilu, low break a lick, chat, GBT. He's trying to take away human talent. GBT, what's GBT? Sorry. Uh, Bob Drinkwater is asking me if I have a favorite time of the day to paint. Uh, uh, do you mean to paint here on YouTube? Yeah, I try to paint every Thursday on YouTube at 2, 3 p.m. Sometimes I'm not able to do it, that's when I'm painting today. And I'm painting like a two hours, two hours earlier than my regular schedule, let's say, because I gotta go out with my kids to watch a movie. Okay, I'm gonna mix a darker color. I'm gonna start simple, orange, white, and, and knock down and darken up this color with raw amber. Okay, now from here, you see the color? You think it had more red? It has more red on the skin, add more red. Okay, now, this is a simple mixture, okay? What's the more important about this? That this is light and this is dark. We've got two families here. We group. Like I can just uh you know I can create a pattern of colors here that from goes from different colors but keeping the same value. And here I'm gonna do the same. Or I can just create more and more patterns of color with different trying to keep values but and adding more and more colors. Okay, I see the, the 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 shadow is kind of greenish, okay, uh, and some areas kind of reddish. And I see a little bit of violet at the same time. I'm gonna use this color first. I don't want to complicate myself myself too much at the beginning. You know, painting when we paint we add more and more colors. That's okay. Especially when we paint in one session on the Prima. I'm not using any medium. Okay. No medium. But I'm not using too much paint. Okay. Oh, I forget something that I was planning to paint just half of the face first. That's gonna, I'm gonna paint this eye, the nose, and half of the mouth. Yeah. Pick up a little bit of red here, orange, and white. A little bit of raw umber to knock it down. I want to paint the mouth. I'm just comparing with the photograph I got to my left, same size. Picking up raw umber and alizarin crimson. Okay. Hello, Maggi. Hello, Christopher. Hello, George. Jorge. Okay. From Colombia. Yep. Thank you. Hello, David. Chat GPT is an AI language model. Oh, AI. You can use to create art, and some people are upset, upset by, by it, thinking human creativity will disappear. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, mm, mm, let me see. We were speaking about that the same last last week, and like, you know, I was thinking about like 
that maybe the more the more I think we got uh, have technology around, I think that's my thought. The more I appreciate, um, I think more people appreciate handmade things. I have seen so many, you know, like I, I, I've been, I've been watching some AI art. It was amazing, but, but yeah, you know, that's like it's amazing, just amazing. And yeah, that's it, you know. We are amazed by technology, obviously, and amazed every time that I check out my cell phone. <laughs> But art is different. Yeah. I think that art is completely different. Okay, I'm comparing a lot, measuring a lot. A visual measuring, but you don't see me doing this. You just you know, calculating and tracing. The photograph is to my left, pretty close. I can compare, I can use a brush and do this for the position of the nose, the eye, the mouth. That makes things easier, okay? About drawing, okay? Hello, Karen. Hello, Jill. Jill Schuller saying hi from Hawaii. Pretty nice. AI, watch the movie here. Oh, I saw the movie. That was pretty nice. Yeah. And this guy fell in love with uh, a computer. With a, a voice, just a voice. <laughs> a woman's voice. I'm just drawing, drawing, just drawing with this brush. Making this color a little bit more reddish to draw the nostril and the nose. There's always shadow below the nose, and the nose is always a little bit reddish. Dory said, I love the way, the way you paint. Oh, thank you so much. She's saying that she watched my videos from start to finish. That's pretty, thank you, thank you. Uh, David Foolish is asking me when you're starting out painting, what do you do with practice paintings? Like this one? Oh, I got a lot of these paintings. Just, I don't do nothing, just keeping them just, you know, here with me. From time to time, um, I sell them mostly to my patrons. Uh, you know, you have a patron account where you can go and just sign up and watch a lot of recorded paint along lessons yeah, and you, we can paint together Saturdays on Saturdays we paint landscapes, still lives, animals, a lot of you know still, uh, for just four four dollars per month on Zoom
gonna paint here just raw umber a little bit of raw umber just painting the edge Oh, Michael Posby sings. What that was Scarlett Johansson, Johansson's voice. Oh wow! Oh, I'm gonna watch that movie again. Hello, Sharon. I didn't know that. No. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of orange to the hair. Okay, first. I'm gonna pick up a bigger brush. A little bit of linseed oil. I'm picking black. I'm picking up black. Mm, not too much paint. And I'm using linseed oil. But you know, I remember that I saw the movie, that hair, that this guy, you know, fell in love with this computer voice, computer human, you know, voice, or I don't know how to say it. It was just a computer, yeah? But I remember I saw the movie because of uh, the colors. Yeah. It was just, it was pretty nice, all the colors, all the harmonies, the color harmony of that movie, that was amazing. Yeah. And then I started to see it, obviously, I started to watch it, I got into, you know, into the story, and that was pretty nice. Hello, Grisalida! Hello, Janus! Oh, hello, Renat. Uh, hello, Karen. Karen is saying hi from Armenia, from the Open Fast Art Academy. Oh, nice. Okay, I'm going to pick up a little bit of orange. I'm going to use just a fan brush. Step back. Let's see. Yeah, that's good, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just checking, checking. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. of camion yellow mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Okay. I see a little bit of orange on the photograph on the hair. I just want to add more saturation to this color. And I got a little bit of camion red and white. Let me know if you have any question about the materials I use or anything okay. I need a brush for blending Work on this eye uh, first on the light on the face. To copy this again, I'm just trying to think uh, about something a, f a simple flat shape, and I see this like a triangle. Okay, and I fill it in with this color. here this area this, this this is not as light as this side but right now since I'm just using two values I uh, don't pay attention to that I'm gonna darken up here I'm gonna light up this later later on the process okay now let's think about shadow this now I'm going to change this color a little bit because I see too much green here okay I'm gonna add a little bit of cobalt blue white camion yellow darker, a little bit of raw umber. Not too much paint yet because you know maybe I'm gonna need to darken up this more. That's pretty common sometimes we just don't get to the darker values. Okay, you see, I'm comparing, yep, I need to add a lot of light, you know, to this side of the face, I need to make the background darker, yeah, I need more green on the, the skin, I think this color is pretty good, but, uh, I'm squinting down my eyes and comparing, and pretty sure that I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to darken up this color. Uh, hello Nikki. 
Uh, Michael is saying, is orange your favorite color at the moment for portraits? <laughs> it works pretty good when it's about, you know, for, for the lights. Uh, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, uh, Christopher is, say, is saying if you are w worried about chat GPT break a leg try debating with it on a certain topic a simple one and try to make it con reconsider what it is saying and you soon realize it's just a humanized Alexa Nice Alexa. Yeah. We need to get Alexa first. I don't have Alexa. I don't think I need Alexa. I'm gonna blend here with the same brush and go lightly blend here okay. now I go here on the eye and the portion of the forehead This color, I'm gonna paint the upper eyelid. I'm comparing, I think that's okay. Now the hair, just with raw umber and a little bit of linseed oil. Hello, Monique. Hello, Mary. the gangs or here <laughs> yeah, that's right Nikki Christopher is asking what's the color should I use if I want to paint a glaze of shadow okay yeah the thing is is it's not just like one answer you know uh, I don't know I mean uh, I would try just to give you just one answer uh, based on what I think maybe your experience or something common that maybe I have seen so many people experience okay and I could say just by guessing you know at a gray glaze okay and why, why what why I'm choosing this gray gray basically black and white or just a gray paint why because sometimes we just uh what i mean i'm speaking about was what i have seen commonly first sometimes we, we end up with a kind of brownish you know saturated shadow and and not dark enough okay and this grayish color is gonna darken up the glaze is gonna knock down that color no i'm just guessing and I shouldn't do that, but I mean, you know, uh, I don't know if maybe you need for your painting that gray to knock down the color, or maybe you end up with a shadow, for example, here that is too dark. In that case, maybe a glaze is not what you, is, is not what you need, or maybe let's say that in, in this case, I got this color here and I need to change it. 
but I need to add the reddish color here. I obviously I would add a red of a glaze of red, you know, a red glaze, and that's gonna fix my problem. So there is no just there is not just one answer. Anyway. But one thing to remember about glaze is that a glaze is not going to change a color that much. It shouldn't change a color that much, okay? It adds color, it changes value a little bit, definitely. Okay, but this is just to add more, to create transparency. More than, uh, I could say that professional painter use a glaze more, more, uh, more for, for creating transparent colors than for trying to correct mistakes. Now it's a stage like a, a, you want to adjust something pretty translucent in an area of the skin, like a greenish translucent color or a pink, a pinky area. And when a painter look, is looking for that, it's not for, hey, I'm going to fix this mistake with a glaze. No, it's just, I want to get, get something more from, from this technique. Uh, stepping back, okay. just like a thought, this color here, I need to darken up that, and just compare it with the photograph, let me see my screen, oh my screen looks even lighter, okay anyway, I need to darken up, I'm squinting down my eyes and I'm stepping back a little bit and checking values, definitely I know for sure that I gotta got light up this. I mentioned that at the beginning, you know, that's, this is a base color because I don't think it's a good idea to go with almost white on the light, almost no white, you know, because I see a lot of light on the light. Mm. And just checking, stepping back and checking. Hello, John. Uh, Jill is surely telling me, is asking me when you're checking with your computer, what does that look like? I guess I'm just curious what you're doing. Oh, yeah, no, I'm just basically stepping back. I got the image on my computer here on my screen. Stepping back, squinting down my eyes and comparing. Yeah. I gotta just every time, I, 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 to, in order to see what your people is just sending me some message, messages, uh, I gotta just kind of move, you know, the photograph and put it back. Yeah, just, just that. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna continue drawing. Uh, now I painted everything. Now I, I know that I'm gonna need I'm gonna need to darken up here. It's time for me to draw. I got this eye, I need this eye. to move the nose a little bit lower, a little bit down. Okay, what about the mouth? Okay. 
painting the lower eyelid a little bit. See a little bit of a shadow there. Out some comments. Hello, inverted pop pops. Low Wolf Pack Studios. Clear JR works good for more than just a thinning agent. Okay, hello, Fanchon33. Hello, Maria. Gambling makes a solvent free JR. I paint medium that comes in a tube. Oh, that's pretty nice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think it's almost uh, like there is a bunch of people here. Don't forget to press the like button, okay? I know it's pretty hard to do. Try it, please. <laughs> Smash the like button. Pretty hard. Don't break your arm trying to do it. Okay. One thing about hair, you can see clearly here, you see this circular area. Okay, remember the cheekbone at the beginning? We can see that clearly. Yeah, that's pretty good. About this area, well, we see a bump here, a bump here, you know. That's because of the muscles. That's not because of the bone. Because the bone structure is just the teeth here. You don't see that much of that. Obviously, the muscles, you know, rest on top of the teeth. But the muscles, uh, because they are just coming from here, just like a spider with they create some, you know, bumps around the mouth. Okay. Now, another thing that we can see clearly here, there's a little bit of a bump. Now, look at the upper image. You see that. Okay. Here, definitely it is. We don't see it because, you know, the image is not that clear. It's too clear. Let's say it's, it has too much light on that area. It's too light that we don't see too many details, but it's there, okay? Now, a you paint, okay, remember, checking, checking the scar image, because you see a lot of things there, you know? Like for example, bump here, bump here. You see the same here, a little bit of light on the scar see the cheekbone that we can see on her face pretty rounded okay yep. and obviously we see light that goes like this this is the zygomatic bone that goes to the ear canal and the ear goes around this Pretty nice, yeah. Mm, okay. I'm going to continue drawing first, and then I'm gonna just uh, go back to think about about uh, values, about light and shadows. Just stop to you know, to study a little bit the anatomy. Okay, uh, where's my brush? One second, okay, here it is. Okay. Now I got the eyes. 
the nose, I think that's okay. Look for alignments, for example, the corner of the mouth is aligned up with the corner of the eye. Highlight here, highlight, highlight. Okay, I'm gonna blend. I'm gonna blend. Oh, where's my brush for blend? Oh, here it is. Oh, no. Okay. Let's think about let's think about color. No. Okay, let's see. I got this orange here, I like it. I'm gonna light up more the light on the face. I'm gonna darken up the shadow. I still need to raise these colors on the face. I'm gonna just uh, see how much I can just push this color, how much I can just saturate this orange and make it glow. Make it a little, little thick paint to make it really, you know, stand up. Yeah. I'm squinting down my eyes, I'm just thinking about color, okay? No. Okay, uh, I got this. I got a little bit of orange here. I can see a little bit of orange on the edge. A little bit of orange here on the reflected light. Okay. No. I'm gonna pick up the color of the shadow again and I'm gonna think about the value, how close is my value to the photograph. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's darken up this more with raw umber, a little bit of green. Now, when it, when the paint is wet, one thing is going to happen that, you know, this is going to get mixed with this color. If I'm doing this, moving my brush, definitely you see a difference between this color and this color here. This is what you mix on the palette, that's what you get here, because everything is wet. And when you spread the paint, unless you, you want to add a lot of paint and just lay down the brush stroke and leave it there, that would be different. You know, but when we paint at the Prima, we go slowly. I go slowly, I make change, I'm making, I'm making changes just gradually. You know, I'm not so sure completely about, hey, how dark, how light I gotta go. Is, you know, I got this from here. I compare on the next stage, I continue comparing, you know, if the color is not okay, eh, I could say that, hey, no, I didn't get the color, but I gotta try to be pretty accurate about values, dark and light, you know, shadows and lights. Okay. Hmm. Oh, oh so Marius, it's only me or it looks like somebody's pulling hair. Hair black. <laughs> yeah, I think it's because of uh, my brush. Because I got these brush strokes. Yeah. 
is darker. Just black, okay, just pure black. Now it's thicker. Picking a little bit of raw umber, picking up some raw umber. Okay, making this darker obviously is gonna add more contrast to the light. We see down the photograph. Yeah, I'm gonna need maybe I'll add some yellow here. Let's see. Well, let's see. Let's see. Michael saying, let's see if we can get 100 likes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Hello, Oscar. Uh, this is oil. Okay. Mm, let's see, let's think, let's think. Okay, I'm gonna go back to here. You know, uh, with Darker background, obviously, I want to see more contrast. Uh, let's darken up. Yeah. Just one second, I've got, I see a little hair. Here. this greenish more blue more yellow touch of white Okay, I'm mixing here this more more green. It's more bluish than greenish. A touch of white. Okay, remember I'm we we painted a primer, we mix on the palette and we mix on the paint. I'm mixing here and when they lay down the color and move it like this, basically it's just like mixing, you know, the color here on the palette. See the light on the face. I'm gonna do something here uh, on this area, okay? Because I want to see something. Mixing white, cobble blue, 
touch of coming yellow more coming yellow here a little bit on the forehead Just blending. Clear history, I think. Right, so can you publish some paintings from your mother and father on your Facebook page? Oh yeah, I will. I will look. Uh, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. I think I said that uh, I was about to do that like a month or maybe more than a month ago. Sorry. apartment now that now is my apartment and I, I uh, you know it was full of my dad's thing things paintings drawings photograph and I was moving I moved all of those things to my dad's house because my, my dad has another house he I mean that's my again dad's house where he's living now with one brother and a sister, you know, just the three of them are living in the house now. And then he's not living here right now, obviously, because he got sick and he was living here alone for so many years. Yeah. And you know, it's just, it's, it's my dad, but I never lived with him, like, maybe I lived him with him for a month when I was a kid. Yeah, maybe, I, I don't remember that clearly. I mean, I remember living with him as a kid, I don't remember how much time, because time is different when you're a kid, <laughs> you know. The thing is that... I found a lot of drawings, a lot of paintings. That was pretty nice. Okay, the same way that uh, I was correcting corrected the value here and the color. Okay, I'm gonna do the same here. Okay. And it, I I still got some some drawings here. I told my dad, hey, I got some drawings here. And he was like, no, don't bring anything more, you know. Even that he's living in a huge house, he was like, no, 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 I don't want, I don't want anything more. I don't need, I don't need anything right now, nothing. And I was, what am I gonna do with your drawings? I mean, those are your drawings. Throw them away, you know, do whatever you want with them. And they're just, maybe just, Ten drawings. 
I'm keeping them with me here. You know? I gotta say that he was a good, really good drawer. Yeah, his drawings are pretty good, technically good. Even that he didn't study in a school of art, and the school of art, he was self-taught. But well, he was pretty good, you know. What he did, all you know, along his life was studied with different painters. I remember he mentioned mentioning that it was one particular teacher that was one of his friends that influenced him a lot, but it was about color more than anything. I don't remember the name, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna paint a little bit of reddish colors on the face. You will know that we have an area of the face are more reddish because we have more blood on those areas. Here, for example, that's pretty clear. Yeah? Okay, I'm gonna lay down some brush strokes with colors red on the nose, too. much space to put the color there but anyway the chin upper and lower eyelid and the forehead sometimes okay uh, let's see I don't think on a little bit a little bit here Darker, darker red. Because here, it's a little bit of you know, red too, but it's a little bit darker. Now the thing is I'm going to take some pictures, I'm going to polish, maybe not, who knows, let's see, I'm not going to promise anything, I think, you know, I forget pretty easy, the things I promise. Yeah, sorry about that. Sharon Wake is saying to me good good painting skulls actually help me with my portrait painting. Everything helps. Everything helps. You know, it's easier to paint what is on top when we, you know what's beneath. Definitely, definitely helps. Now there isn't a stage to practice anatomy. Okay, if somebody's a an absolute beginner, okay, first you need to uh improve your observation skills and for that you don't need anatomy it's m more about just drawing 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 copy 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 just by doing that you're I mean you're getting better like a copy that means that observation is, is better and then when you get to the point that you're kind of you know able to copy something and that's kind of okay then you can move to study to study anatomy at the very beginning, to study anatomy is not going to be helpful at all. Maybe it's going to be confusing. You know, but definitely, uh, at the, let's say at the right stage on the learning process, it helps a lot. It helps a lot, definitely. 
okay uh, but you know that's an, a suggestion but if some somebody is, is just a perfect uh, absolute beginner and is trying is willing to try anatomy go ahead pretty sure that you know pretty sure that pretty sure that this is always good to get more information yeah and we need that we need information that's going to be the same about color theory about proportions that's going to be always the same study 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 I mean, I'm not saying that you need to be perfect or anyone has to be perfect copy. No, it's just at the stage that you're able to copy, but you still see like, hey, I got something is not okay, you know, I got mistakes. But in getting better copying, that's the point that when anatomy is pretty good. Because that helps to see more. The thing is that we see, you know, but we need to see more. The only thing that helps us to see more is knowledge. And anatomy is just is that. The same is color. You know, color theory knowledge helps us to see more colors, to see more harmonies, to see contrast between temperature contrast and all of those things. That, I mean, those things are there, but it's just like we don't see them because first, we don't even know that those things exist. We don't even look for them. When we know that, we start looking for for those things for temperature, no light temperature, shadow temperature. Okay, now I got a little bit of green here, a little bit of this pinky color it's nice I like it a little bit of this orange obviously I'm gonna be adjusting the colors more and more blending mixing adding more paint and always you know checking checking out color and values that means that I need to get to the point that to get those uh, lighter, you know, uh, of values. I think you know the face looks pretty light to the point that sometimes I want to add just white, like here, just pure white, thick, pure white. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't matter how light. You see a photograph or a skin color, you know, if you put a piece of you know, paper next to a face, to any, any face, you can see, you know, that any, to the photograph or to a life model, you put a piece of white paper, you're going to see that the skin has a lot of color. Oh, wow, it looks pretty dark. <laughs> My camera is not able to, you know, to manage that kind of contrast. In order to see this white, you know, it's dark enough everything yeah. uh, hello Mohammed uh, Bo hello Bob hello Lion King saying hi from India hello David saying hi from fr Florida Bob drink what is it can you compare your painting uh, to photo using Photoshop Please. Yeah, yeah, I will. Yeah, yeah, definitely I will. Christopher is saying, right, so when starting a portrait from a drawing with a grid, what should I do so I don't, I don't lose the drawing? 
Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's you know. Uh, it's more. You need to practice. Okay. The, the, the thing is about balance. Okay. Uh, you need to practice first proportions. Just by eye, not using a grid. Proportions. What the measurements? Okay. From the nose. The things I have repeat so, so many times in my videos. You know, from the nose, from the the eyebrows to the nose, from the nose to the chin, and all of those things again and again, again and again. Okay. Now, um, just one second. I need to think. Let me draw the color. I'm gonna add this. I love this green. Come green. Put it here. Okay. <clears throat> now, the thing is, if you don't practice, you know the proportions. If you're trying to learn them by heart. You're not, that's gonna be your tool. That's gonna help you when. You're painting and you lost the drawing when everything starts to move. That's the only thing that's gonna help you at that moment to move things. Okay? Because inevitably uh, things move when we add paint. The oil painting has some thickness and when we add lay down a brush stroke, that brush stroke kind of move the paint and little by little we know we we see something that something something is happening on the painting. We're losing control. We're losing the drawing. Okay, and it's it's like we don't have anything to to prevent that. It's just like we don't know what to do. And that's when this knowledge about proportions come into place. Just one second, I'm just thinking about this. Just one second, just thinking about the painting right now. Comparing Okay, continue painting. Okay, we're speaking about uh, don't remember. Oh, about losing the drawing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just thinking what else I can suggest. I think that's the only thing, you know. Okay, 
in our written comments. Just one second. Uh, okay, Michael Pospi saying, "What measure? Me what measure is? Does your actual painting area have? Uh, this is like eight by eight inches." Hello, Pili Martinez. Gracias. Christopher saying, uh, "Why? Why it is that my painting looks like the face has powder on it? The color looks looks kind of." Uh, may, may you're adding uh, too much white. Uh, one, that's one thing, you know, and that's uh, uh, that's because uh, you're having problems with, um, let's say, mixing the shadows. Basically, when the shadows are pretty light, you know, everything looks pretty light. It's just like uh, imagine that I paint my shadows light here. And all the shadows light, all my paintings and they look kind of transparent. And on top of that, if I don't have some accents, it's gonna look even more transparent. Okay, that's a thing that's about mixing. Uh, now that's not gonna it's not gonna be a magic solution for mixing. Okay, that's gonna just take you a, a little bit of experience mixing colors. Now, obviously, it's better you follow something, you know. Uh, some exercises about color theory, because when we basically, we try to do things by ourselves without following anything, any instru instru instruction or video or anything, anything for free that we, you can find, or some exercises. It's gonna take more time, okay? Because if nobody, is point, no, if nobody points out your mistakes, you're gonna be able to know your mistakes. You're not gonna be able to fix them. Huh? And that's kind of difficult to to take because okay, uh, you know, it's just like uh, it's just like me when uh, I study English. Okay, it's been a little bit since I, I didn't, I don't paint a tutor, a teacher. I gotta do it, you know. It's just I didn't have the time. Basically, I pay a teacher to point out my mistakes. That's the only thing that, you know, I want. And, and the thing is, it's not easy to, 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 to deal with that because uh, it's not like we love to be critique, but I know that I need that. You know, I was watching an interview today and a painter, you know, it's just like, um, the question was like, hey, what, what would you do if you, you know, you meet sergeant on heaven, on any, anywhere, you know, and the painter, he, he was like, hey, I'm gonna ask him for a critique. I'm gonna ask him what would she do with my painting to make it better. No, oh, that was a nice, you know, answer. It was like, oh my god, yes, yes, that's you know. That's pretty nice. Okay, the, the thing is that if nobody points out our mistakes, we're not gonna be able to fix them. And the thing is it's not easy to take critiques. Nobody likes to be critiqued and usually about the same things, you know? It's just, that's why I put example about, about me studying English. Why? Because sometimes a teacher tell me, hey, you're making that mistake. And next session, next week, hey, you again, the same mistake. And after a month, two months, the same mistake. And I, uh, to the point that I feel, you know, you know what? I'm giving up, okay? I don't care. It's just like impossible for me to not make those mistakes again and again, again and again. But it's what it takes. It's just we don't like people pointing out our mistakes. Nobody likes it. It's just I'm not saying that I like it. I just I'm saying that I what I need, not what I like. Yeah. Uh, uh, what I like is everybody saying, "Oh, your painting is pretty beautiful." Yeah, everybody wants that. We all want that. You know, as soon as somebody points out a mistake, we go. Mm. But we need that in order to improve. OK. 
Okay, I need to move a little, a little bit of things. I need to add more, more here. Mm, mm, just thinking, thinking. I need to soften some, eh, some shadows. Mm, I have. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, first I wanna darken up here. Here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Peter Cobox is saying, uh, Jim Ewing is saying your camera is a lot better today. Oh, that's good. Uh, what colors are, are you using for the wrinkles? Dark reddish brown? Yeah, something like that. What's better? Paint a wrinkle with line or using different values to get a line illusion? Yeah, it's. <laughs> kind of a combination of both, you know. If we paint a line, if we leave it there, well, no, how we create the illusion that that area is turning. We need to paint the line and just soften. And when we soften that line, we create basically more values. Okay, I need to soften this. Mixing Romber and Alicia and Kinson. Okay, a little bit of black. Now here, for example, that's a line. If I leave just a line like that, uh, that that's not going to help with the addition of you know volume that I want. Uh, I need to soften that just by going, you know, lightly with the same brush. Now what I have is you know a value, kind of a value scale from a darker color to a lighter area. Just from one line, I ended up having you know, more values. Thank you, Oscar Francis. Thank you, Joan. Joan is saying, I love how you brought out uh, the porcelain look of her skin. Thank you. Hello, Franco. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, Monique is saying, this painting reminds me of Andrew Wythe. I don't know how to pronounce the name. Okay. It needs more shadow under the nose. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay.
cleaning my brush and softening the edges. Now, one of the difficult things about painting uh, is about edges, okay? For example, here, I don't see basic, I see basically a light on the lower eyelid. But when we paint, you know, we usually pay attention to that area, we want to see details. Even sometimes we don't see details, there's no details sometimes on the paint, on the, on the image. Uh, for the on the photograph on real life, but we tend to create little lines like make make on be on the lower eyelid make it darker. Sometimes a dark line, you know, and 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 we think, hey, you know, that's good because we see now the eye. But we gotta understand that there are so many soft edges when we see a face and on top of that when we paint we tend to sometimes to exaggerate that to, to create even softer edges for a more artis artistic look okay. first obviously we need to learn to draw measure drawing and measuring okay then values that are pretty important and ages and ages i think is pretty important but this one of the more maybe uh no i'm, I'm not gonna say the more difficult things but i gotta say that it takes a lot of time to get used to that soften ages you know when the drawing is pretty good when the values are pretty good Edges just do magic on the on painting, not, not, not just a portrait, any, any, on its, any subject, specifically soft, you know, soft and lost edges. I have seen so many masterpieces, amazing paintings that from a distance I think I see the terms when I get closer there's no detail, details at all, it's just, you know, everything is kind of lost. No sharp uh, lines or brush strokes, everything's soft. Thank you. Uh, Maria, M M Marian, hello, Garu. Oh uh, yeah, usually Garu and painting Thursdays, but you know, some days it's just difficult to, to paint. Okay. Mm -hmm.
Okay, mm -hmm. I'll read the comments in a minute. Don't see the value difference there on my screen. Oh, okay. Nikki has been so busy moving that he does his life at his time permits. Yeah. Thank you, Nikki. Felicity saying, are these beautiful women commission paintings or are you choosing images that appeal to you? Yep. What other subjects do you paint, Lorenzo? <laughs> Who's Lorenzo? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I mean... Lately, I've been confusing, like, I've been calling different names. No bad names, you know. Somebody called me Franco. Somebody called, called me uh, Lorenzo. Now, again, Lorenzo. <laughs> yeah, I just paint uh, what I like. Yeah, I usually choose my paint, my the images from Pinterest. And, and here I am, I just paint. Uh, and basically, I, I, pa I have painted landscapes, landscapes, no, no, still lives, and, oh, uh, you know, animals, and just that, I think, yeah? Uh, my channel, you're going to find that I painted with pastels and acrylics, and on Patreon, where I, you know, I teach on Patreon. Or patron, I we paint still life landscapes on Saturdays, and we paint portraits on Sundays, and we paint human figure Tuesdays. We draw portraits on Thursdays. Yep. Peter is saying, do you live by painting? I mean, I know you have Patreon, but years ago you painted for commissions and made a living from it. Yes, I painted uh, commissions a lot. And now, now that, you know, now I don't paint commissions, like, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, it's not like I don't paint commissions, it's just like, it takes me too long to paint a commission. I don't know why. I don't know what's happening. I think maybe I got just uh, the way that you know they say I'm bur burnt out, burnt out. Uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, you know that happened to me like the last ten times. I got a commission and something that for sure I could end up maybe 
in what in a week I was it was taking me like six months yeah, and I choose to paint some commissions live on YouTube just live on YouTube and that was okay you know but after finish up the, the, the session on YouTube I had to do some retouches and for those retouches I spent like maybe it's four more months four more months and yeah, usually people want a commission really fast I'm pretty happy that I didn't get, get killed by those people that you know kept wait, waiting for their paintings that much yeah. and now I decided not to paint commissions not anymore, you know, that's just for now. Because yeah, at some point I'm going to go back to paint commissions. I painted a lot of commissions, you know, that's what the first thing that I started to do. And even when I started to paint, when I was maybe to help my mom when I was 14, it was about just helping my mom paint commissions, portraits. Oh my God, there's been so much, I think. Yeah. I started to paint my, my commissions and I make a living of that, you know. And maybe with time, what it grows is just like this feeling about not painting commissions anymore. But since I love painting portraits, I still, you know, paint portraits. It looks kind of no, kind of uh, weird, but what can I say? I don't know. Uh, I got no defense. I'm guilty. So what can I say? It's just the, the way people are, you know, that and just, you know. This is art, we're free to, to you know, uh, just like that. I'm feeling guilty myself now, that not on, because I'm, I'm not painting commission. <laughs> I shouldn't. Nikki saying, "Want a coffee, Renzo?" Oh, oh yeah, well, we all would, yeah. Should critique tonight? I don't think so. Yeah. I promised my kids to go out. I'm gonna look for my uh, coffee link. You know, coffee. One second. For the people that's willing to say thank you or you know collaborate with my channel in some way, a coffee is a good way to do it. Sorry. To my channel, Renzo here. here. Oh my god, I'm looking for the link. <laughs> okay, here's the link. Okay, that's the link to coffee. You know, for the people that love coffee. No, you know they love coffee. They could like to invite me a coffee. Okay, let's, let's continue. Okay, let me see. It's been almost two hours, that's good, I think.
Now, speaking about commissions, uh, my mom, you know, she's a painter. But she she doesn't paint like you know for years, and she saw when a friend, an old friend, I don't remember that. Uh, the thing is that she painted some portraits like I don't know from ten years ago maybe. And she saw the person, you know, the same person, like y yesterday, and she was, she was like, hey, this person just, you know, she, he want me to paint a couple more portraits of his family. And she was pretty happy because she got a couple of commissions, you know. And today she was like, hey, Renzo, you want to paint a couple of commissions? I said, oh, no. <laughs> He went, oh my God, now what are they going to do? I <laughs> she was like, now what are they going to do? I mean, she, she was pretty happy first, you know, about getting those commissions. And now she's worried because it's kind of, she's like, she's happy but at the same time because she know that, you know, she haven't, she hasn't painted for the last, I think, 10 years. Yeah. That's gonna be kind of you know, difficult for her to go back that easily, and with a couple of commissions. That you know, the idea about commission is getting getting pretty good. You know, at the end I'm gonna pay the commissions. You know, what we're gonna do? I'm gonna pay the commissions, but she's gonna get the money. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty funny. Frank Dart. He's asking me what the size of the canvas eight by eight inches. So your pastel, the pastel of Woody Har Har Harrison is the best. Oh, thank you. You can call me Felice Facility. Okay. Do you go to school? Yeah, I went to. Hello, Randy. I, I, yeah, I studied at the school of school of art here in Peru. Oh, I got a coffee from Nikki. Thank you so much, Nikki. With this, I'm gonna drink a huge coffee. <laughs> No, pretty funny what I was saying about my mom. You know? She was pretty happy first. Like, I got a commission. And then, what am I going to do now? <laughs> Here, my family is kind of, it's like slowly everybody's in art. No, no, slowly, let's say, but slowly because of my daughter, for example. My daughter, she's she started to draw and she draws like daily and she's getting some commissions, but no paintings. She's more on, on uh, illustration, but no, illust uh, no not, not illustration. Uh, how's the, uh, okay. She started with watercolors, you know, she paints uh, 
her own uh, how can I say it? characters you know she paints by memory I mean you can sometimes you use a reference but to create a character not to copy it exactly okay and now she getting some commissions she's getting some commissions and and even a couple of years ago when she was 16 you know somebody uh, called her and to uh, this uh, it was a company like um, I don't remember it wasn't from, from in Peru it was a company that she was uh, they were interested in you know hire my, my hire my my daughter to do illustrations and they were like hey how much you know we pay this and that and my daughter she was hey I'm 16 and they say oh my god you're 16 oh my god we cannot you know hire a, a, a teenager you gotta be at, at least 18 years old she was pretty happy because she got that opportunity and they were where where you where do you study where, you know where are you studying in some place and she was no no just drawing by myself obviously I'm the one that who teaches her just you know I saw her drawings I suggest a few things and but she doesn't like me to critique her work because she thinks that I'm pretty rough when I critique and she's like I don't want you to critique my drawings my paintings yeah. and, and I say okay I'm not gonna critique her work but you know that I think that if nobody point out your mistakes how do you improve those mistakes how do you change those those things that you're doing wrong but I think that doesn't work with my daughter, you know. And I try to suggest just little things like, hey, why well, you should put a shadow here, it should be darker, it should be cooler because, you know, this and that contrast, warm and cool contrast, temperature contrast. And she's like, okay. And one day she's like, no, I'm not going to listen to you. You're not good at critiquing. You don't, you're not good even on teaching. No, 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 no. Leave me alone. And I said, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Grisalida. Mm. Frank is say, is asking me, do you ever use water mixable oil paints? Yeah, yeah, I have used. I, I have even a couple of videos on my channel, maybe more than a couple that I painted with um, were a mix of paints bit of chrome yellow uh, chrome green and white I need some greenish accents To, I have orange here. I'm gonna add a little bit of red, pure red on the darker area. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of blue, cobalt blue here. I need to soften some edges, for example, here. Now this blue, I don't even see 
I don't even see the blue so clearly like hey that's blue there but that's my intention you know uh, because I have orange was the opposite color blue I want to create contrast that's why I added some touches of blue just tiny touches tiny touches and at the same time she has blue eyes I'm going to clean up this area here. Okay. A little bit of green. A little bit of orange here. shape of the forehead is not okay. Oh, I didn't notice that. Oh my god, I make a horrible mistake here. But you know, because we add more and more paint, we don't pay attention to the drawing, and obviously we start losing the drawing, losing the shapes, the form. Okay, <clears throat> Nikki, Nikki saying I must leave now. Okay, Nikki, thank you so much. Okay, don't forget 
this is for everybody don't forget to press the like button looks like that's pretty important for YouTube for YouTube who cares about YouTube that's pretty important for me <laughs> Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Hey Oscar, thank you so much. I got a coffee from Oscar, Oscar Barrios.
Okay. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Robert is saying, Hi Renzo, great work. Do you ever draw with a welcome board digi digitally? I'm drawing along with one now and I have learned a lot already. Okay. Oscar Barry, sure, I'm looking to get you in action today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, I know with a uh, welcome board but I have painted, you know, uh, just in Photoshop on my computer, I, I got this uh, graphic tablet, X, X, what's the name here, X, X pen, I think, X, XP pen, yeah, XP pen, you know, and I got, I have some, uh, some paintings on my channel. I don't remember, maybe four or five paintings. Yeah. But I mean, I just, I, uh, I'm not teaching anything. Uh, here, obviously, I paint, I practice, I teach a little bit what I do. Okay, and this thing about digitally, you know, unlearning and just sharing the few things I know. But I think it's pretty amazing the things that we can do with uh, on digital painting, and it's not easy. When I was watching, uh, I mean, I mean, I was watching just digital paintings. You know, I thought as a as a classical painter, you know, I made the mistake that thinking, oh my God, that's too easy. You know, I'm not gonna do that. That's not painting. Yeah. And what an awful mistake, you know, that's the things that sometimes we do when we don't know about something. We assume that it's just easy. And I start to practice. And that's not more because of my daughter, you know, my daughter, she started to, to draw with a digital tablet. And I started to, you know, get more interest and interest, and obviously I thought thinking that that was too easy. And as soon as I tried it, I realized that at first the same principles that applies for painting, you know, applies for any kind of painting. It doesn't matter. It could be watercolor, it could be digital painting, it, and uh, what obviously is. In, in something that is easier, obviously, is uh, all the options that we have that show us, you know, like different options. I can create a layer, I, I paint, I, if I don't like, I just, you know, erase that layer. Things that obviously that are pretty difficult to do when on the, with a traditional medium because in order to see something, we gotta do it and we cannot go back, you know. And for that, basically, we trust on our own experience and we take the risk to do something and then just move it and move it until we, we got something that we think is nice. Anyway, the thing is that it's pretty good. I like it a lot. You know, I've been painting a few, but I want to paint definitely more okay and one thing that another thing that's it pretty easy to, you know to just pick up the tablet turn on my computer and that's it you know I don't need anything more okay. uh, with painting with oil painting we need more preparation okay but the thing is the oil painting obviously is is something that definitely I'm not gonna change oil paintings or any alteration medium ever, you know. I'm gonna continue painting traditionally with oil paints. Uh, definitely I'm gonna paint with Photoshop more because I like it.
Jim Ewing saying, how do you hang a digital painting on your wall? <laughs> Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Another thing that I love about uh, digital painting is that we can practice. I can use it to practice, you know, different options. And definitely, definitely I use Photoshop on the Patreon uh, lessons to see different options about changing uh, the color, changing the background. You know, or just selecting the skin color. That's pretty amazing. All the options that we have with, especially with Photoshop for me. Yeah. And not just for me. You know, when I use it on on Patreon lessons, usually my patrons. You know, they asking me about what I use because they want to try the same. You know, I think everybody know that knows that there is some kind of you know advantage when you uh, have a, a, a medium, a way to, to 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 make a sketch, and in this way you can just kind of plan ahead what you're gonna do in terms of color. Yeah, and that's what I, I like basically mostly about digital painting. on my cell phone. You know, my daughter and my son, they are waiting for me. Just want to see if that's okay. Uh, just one second. What else? What else? Let me know any question. I'm gonna paint maybe ten more minutes. that's enough yeah because at some point we need to take a rest you know it's, it's just like you no know, doesn't matter how hard we try uh, we start thinking that everything is pretty good on the painting or we basically we don't see mistakes and all the sudden next day you know all the mistakes just show I'm comparing a lot, that's basically what I do. Oh, uh, and oh, somebody asked me about Photoshop. Let me do something. Another thing that I've been doing lately is I capture my screen. Okay. And I use Photoshop to compare. Just one second. One second, one second, one second. I'm gonna share my screen just in a minute. Okay, here my here's my screen. I'm going to share it. Okay, let me know. Okay, here is Photoshop. Here's my screen. Okay, uh no, that's, this is what I have. It's not, a, it's not a, like a high resolution, but 
about the drawing I think it's pretty close about the color you know I see too much I see more red on this uh, on the screen that is red on my painting but anyway you know yeah. for example I want to explain here things that um, uh, I recommend and obviously I try always to, to do but it's not like a success I'm successing on them every every time for example about edges uh, I try to in the smaller areas look at here oops it's just a let's say a soft edge a sharp edge okay a little bit of soft edge a sharp edge no really a lost edge I'm gonna soften more some edges let's see the reverse okay about the drawing I think I'm pretty close yeah about values I see light and shadow about the color you know yeah I mean I'm not that close I like the color here no let me see if everybody's watching this yeah okay yeah. Uh, I like this green I think very kind of close yeah, it's just the light here and I think uh, my my red is just too pinky compared to the color here okay the orange here is not glowing like I want it I'm gonna add more orange now okay yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do that definitely go back to this yeah, I think it's okay, you know, I see some volume, I still need to work on edges, I need to add some accents, that for, that's for sure, some orange, like, uh, maybe here, oops, I'm picking orange, some orange here, here, that's what I see, you know, more orange here, and here, uh. Mm, yeah, I think just that. Okay. Oh. Okay, I'm going to... Okay, uh, what I mentioned, I'm gonna add a touch of orange. Okay, here, a little bit. In order to make it glow, it has to be thicker. Okay, I'm gonna mix orange with camel yellow. Soften here. But this way I have an accent just here. Okay. A little bit of orange here too. So to spread the color. Same orange here. Now, uh, in, the, in the photograph, the light on the cheek here is pretty light just as the nose and, and keeping this a little bit darker this area a little bit darker uh, uh, to have more light on the nose and see the light the highlight on the nose because I don't see the highlight on the nose on the photograph you know because 
there's confusing, you know, uh, between the nose and this cheek, the valley is pretty close. I'm trying to make a difference, a little bit of a difference there. Okay. Let's continue with uh, more orange. Can just on the tip of the brush. Use some touches, touches, touches. That's too much. That's too much. And I see that there's a shadow here. It's darker here, but oh, let's see. I'm gonna paint that shadow the dark. A little bit of green to knock down the, the orange here. I'm trying to soften this edge a little bit, a little bit. That's too, too much, I think. Touch of yellow. And I'm going, this, this orange is just too much for here. So maybe if I spread it a little bit more. And more. Yeah, I think that works.
sometimes that's the problem we build, when we blend sometimes we start to light up the shadow I'm picking up a little bit of raw umber here and blending but with a little bit of this raw umber on my brush I'm gonna soften the edge here on the forehead. Okay, I think that's it for today. Yep. Yep. Mm. Hello, Irma. Thank you, Rupert. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Michael is saying, I use Krita. It is open source. Oh, that's a good option, Krita. I use Photoshop, but you gotta pay for Photoshop. It's not free, but Krita looks is free. No, no, it's open source, it's free. Irma Rodriguez saying I was late. Eh. Hello, Diego, I would love to paint like you and integrate the fan brush work of Steven Sell. Oh, wow, that would be amazing. Yeah, I mean, not, yeah, okay. <laughs> Historias Misteriosas, awesome class. Painting is fabulous. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, everybody here. Thank you, everybody, for the coffee to Nikki and Oscar. Yeah. Thank you for the likes. Yeah. Okay. Remember, press the like button. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you so much. There are some links on the description box. If you, want, if you want to buy some materials using my links, I got links to the oil paints and brushes that I use to Amazon. And even if you don't use my links to buy my things, but use my links to buy anything, I'm going to get a commission. Okay, and what else? Yeah, links to my Patreon. Links to just, yeah, just that. Amazon and Patreon. Thank you so much everybody, take care you all, see you next time. Yep. Hello Ardesh. Uh, hello Evelyn, thank you.
Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Ardesh. Thank you, everybody.